In this video, we're going to take a look at an important shortcut for multiplying what's called a perfect square, where we have some binomial, maybe a plus b, that is squared. This shortcut that we're going to look at takes a little bit of practice to get used to, and so a lot of students decide they don't want to take the time to do the practice, and they prefer the long way. That's a dangerous practice to get into for this shortcut, because this shortcut is going to become very important to us in the future. So those that don't take the time to learn this shortcut are going to be at a large disadvantage in future units. So please take the time to look at how this works, and once we get the pattern down, you'll actually prefer it over the long method. But to set it up, I will use the long method so we understand where it comes from. When we see something is squared, what that means is we multiply it by itself. So what that really means is we're doing a plus b times a plus b. So if we were to FOIL this out, a times a is a squared, a times b is a b, b times a in alphabetical order is a b, and b times b is b squared. What we'll notice is in the middle, those are exactly identical like terms. We have two of those a b's. So really this multiplies out to a squared plus two of these a b's plus b squared. One thing I want to notice about this answer is when we had a plus b squared, it is not in capital red letters underlined not the same as a squared plus b squared. A common error is students will try and distribute that squared through. We can only put an exponent through parentheses if we're only multiplying inside. Any adding or subtraction does not work. That is to say, a plus b squared is not equal to, is not the same as a squared plus b squared. So with that said, the perfect squared shortcut, if we have something like a plus b, and that is all squared, what we will do to square it is we will first square the first term, a squared. Then we will multiply them together. That gives us a, b. And that multiplying together is there twice. a, b, and a, b is two of these a, b's. And then finally, we will square the last term, b squared. So what does that look like with numbers? Well, if we have x minus 4 squared, we can start by just squaring the x, x squared. I'm going to move it down, actually, so I have a little more space. Then I'll multiply them together. x times negative 4 is negative 4x, and then we have another negative 4x. It's there twice. Negative 4 and negative 4 is negative 8 of these x's. And then finally, we'll square the last term. Negative 4 squared is positive 16. So we get our solution from squaring of x squared minus 8x plus 16. Let's try one more example as we get used to this new pattern as a shortcut for squaring a binomial. 2x plus 7 squared, we'll start by squaring the first term. 2 squared is 4, x squared. And then we'll multiply them together twice. 2x plus 7 is 14x. 7 times 2x is 14x. It's there twice. 14 and 14 is 28x's. And then finally, we'll square the last term. 7 squared is 49. And we get our final answer of 4x squared plus 28x plus 49. After students get really comfortable with this, sometimes they don't write this little step in the middle, and they do that in their head. 14 plus 14 is 28, and jump right to the answer. If you're good with that, I'm okay with that, 
But if that still feels weird to you, it might be worth writing that down as a little bit of notes to yourself as you square your binomial. Square the first, the product's there twice, and we square the last term. Squaring a binomial. A shortcut that takes a little getting used to, but in the long term, it's going to be very worth knowing what a perfect square is and how it behaves.